we're also addressing the national security risk posed by certain types of outbound investments. I uh, had a discussion with, with Xi Jinping in China. Why was I not transferring certain technological capabilities? And I said very simply, because you're using them for weapons of mass destruction and intelligence intervention. And I said, if we could work out something on that, we'd have a very different relationship. Chinese have a, have a Belt and Road Initiative. Well, the Belt and Road Initiative turns out to be a debt and uh, confiscation program. Not going very far. But what we're doing, and we're going to be doing it with our NATO allies, with the G7, is providing opportunities. For example, Angola I, should be in a position very soon to have the largest uh, um, the largest solar facility in the world, generating significant amounts of energy. Benefits us, benefits them, brings them into the 21st century in a way that they've never been before. We're talking about building, and I have my team putting together with other countries as well, to build a railroad from the Pacific Ocean, from the Atlantic Ocean, all the way to the Indian Ocean. Never occurred before. And just as we collaborate to protect our national security, so must we increasingly do the same to protect our economic security, on which our prosperity depends. Countries like China and Russia are willing to manipulate and exploit our openness, steal our intellectual property, use technology for authoritarian ends, or withdraw crucial resources like energy. They will not succeed. Today, we have agreed the Atlantic Declaration a new economic partnership for a new age of a kind that has never been agreed before. That means new investment. This week alone, 14 billion pounds of new American investment has been committed into the UK, creating thousands of jobs. It means stronger supply chains with a new action plan on clean energy. And it redu means reducing trade barriers in the technologies of the future with a new secure UK-US data bridge, helping tens of thousands of small businesses an agreement to work towards mutual recognition of more professional qualifications in areas like engineering. And we're launching negotiations on a new critical minerals agreement. Once concluded, this will give UK companies stronger access to the US market. And we're building on our extraordinary shared strengths in cutting edge future technologies with joint research collaborations in areas like quantum, semiconductors, and AI. Now, the UK looks forward to hosting the first global summit on AI safety later this year so that we can seize the extraordinary possibilities of this new technological age and do so with confidence.